Hey, Pastor Steve here. I thought I'd take a brief moment to check in with you by way of video and share of some thoughts and some encouraging words. You know, we've been blessed with another day filled with hope and opportunity. And I pray and trust that you find yourself confident in all that is yours through Jesus Christ. So as we face another day that includes our response to the coronavirus and the changes we've been asked to make to help stop the spread and protect the well-being of others, I want to take you back to something I said three weeks ago and reminded you then to stay vigilant. When the virus posed a deeper threat, we, like a few others, quickly moved to communicate with you uh, what we would be doing to offset the potential spread of the bacteria and disease. In that communication, I said this. Let me read it to you. Actually, it was a letter. Uh, let me speak to you and offer encouragement as a follower of Jesus Christ. We often share how we as believers have faith and hope that is much larger than this moment, our health, or what the world has to offer. Even now, as fear seems to be gripping the heart of many around us, we as Christians can live and demonstrate the confidence and hope that we've found and enjoy in Jesus Christ. So let me encourage you to share that hope with those around you who feel afraid at this time. Many of you are faithful prayer warriors, and one of the best ways we can respond is through prayer. We're quick to acknowledge that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but even greater is the fact that he's the great physician. And as we find ourselves in this moment, we need peace and healing to combat the fear and sickness. As followers of Jesus Christ, let me challenge you to pray. Pray for each other. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for the leaders of our federal, state, and local government. They're working for our good and safety. And if the opportunity presents itself, pray with your family and friends and neighbors who are gripped with fear. Prayer. That's the key to all that matters in our lives at this moment. That's the challenge that I want to give you, is pray. And here we are on this Wednesday. It's a day when we usually meet in the evening here in the church sanctuary. And, and I was reminded of the importance of prayer, and I wanted to, to share that with you as God's children. I was thinking this morning, and as I was going through the, some thoughts of, of a simple, just a brief statement on prayer, I was reminded of, a, of an old song we used to sing when I was a young boy. It was, we sung it every Wednesday night before uh, prayer time, and I was going through that in my mind, and I started to sing it as I was thinking it through, and I thought, wow, that's a powerful reminder of prayer and its importance. Here's how the, here's how the song goes. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Now I hope that this will be a reminder to you of the importance of prayer. And maybe you'll sing that th song through uh, this evening and maybe tomorrow. Do it more than once, and as you do, consider the lyrics. Now I want to challenge you to listen to, to two passages of Scripture. First, let me take you to Hebrews 4.16. It reads this way, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I want to make sure you got it there, because that verse encourages us to pray. It encourages us to go to the throne of God, the throne of grace. And not only does it encourage that, it says to come with confidence. And when we do, we're reminded that we will receive mercy and find grace in time of need. You know, God is ready to provide what we need in this moment. We need to confidently go to him in prayer. I'm reminded of another verse. It's a verse that I used to use, that I use um, every year when we do the National Day of Prayer up in our community. And that verse is 2 Chronicles 7, uh, 14. It reads this way. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways... Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I just want to challenge you in regards to prayer. 
to know this. God is ready, willing, and able to hear and respond to the prayers of his people, to your prayers. So I want to encourage you to pray. And you can take a moment, pause the video, and grab a piece of paper and a pen. Here's a list for you. Pray for our president, the vice president, the senators and representatives, governors, mayors, sheriff, police, doctors, nurses, EMT, uh, firemen. Pray for them. Pray for their protection. Pray for them as they respond to the needs of our country. They're seeking to help stop the spread of disease and the virus. Pray for them as they make decisions at the federal, state, and local levels, specifically in an interest to keep us safe. Pray for those who've tested positive and for those in the hospitals recovering from this disease or even fighting the disease. Pray as well for their families. Pray specifically for the health care providers on the front line, that God will put a hedge of protection around them who are taking care of patients and putting themselves and the health of their own families at risk. Received a note from our missionary today. Um, he asking me what, how he could pray for me. And I was reminded as I was thinking this through that we need to remember to pray for our missionaries. They're around the world, and they themselves are being pulled in, in many directions as they deal with this epidemic. And yet they want to stay faithful to spreading the good news of the gospel. Pray for our missionaries. Pray for families. Pray that they'll be encouraged. Pray for students that are home from school. Ask God to keep them healthy and strong. And uh, pray that they'll find many ways to be creative and to help spend their time in a meaningful way. Pray that they'll turn to God and place their faith and trust in Him through Jesus Christ. Pray for our seniors and shut-ins that they'll stay healthy and strong. Pray for them especially as they're unable to have visitors, that they won't get lonely or be discouraged. And pray for your pastors and church leadership. Pray for their safety and protection, and that God will continue to grant them wisdom and discernment as they seek to lead and encourage their people. And pray for our country. This may be the time and place for our country to have a great awakening, for us to see revival in our land. You know, as Christians, we want to shine bright in this moment of darkness. We want to literally share the light of Jesus Christ and shatter the darkness that, is, that abounds. And with the good news of the gospel and the hope and care that we can offer others through Jesus Christ, we need to embrace this opportunity. So in your praying my challenge for you is to ask God to guide you with confidence and strength to, pray, to spread something that's good. Hold fast to the hope that you have in Christ. Remain vigilant to meet the needs of your family and others for the cause of Christ to bring glory to God. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this Wednesday. Thank you for the opportunities that are ours to communicate with each other and for the powerful promises and truths of your word that we can we can hold fast to and rest on for the hope that it gives us and for the desire that uh, we have to share with each other this hope. I pray that we will be a praying people and that you'll find us faithfully praying for and encouraging others and being steadfast in our own spirit, uh, walking forward and, and confidently in the peace that passes all understanding that comes through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of this moment and for the opportunity of a, of a video clip to, to send it out to others to, to watch and to be encouraged, we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.